Step 1. Download the latest version of Ubuntu using the link given in the description below. Step 2. Download the latest version of VirtualBox. Again, the link is given in the description below. Step 3. Install VirtualBox. So go ahead and run the installer. Hit the run button and then next, next, next and install and make sure to launch the application after you finish the installation. Step 4. Create a virtual machine. So go ahead and click on the new button and if you don't see a window like this one, click on the expert mode button and then change the name to Ubuntu OS and the RAM size to 4096 MB. Hit create and then change the disk size to 50 GB. Leave everything else the same and hit create. Step 5. Fix network settings for the virtual machine. So go ahead and click on the tools button and then go to preferences, go to network and click the plus button on the right. Hit OK and then go to Ubuntu OS, go to settings, go to network, click the drop down list and click on NAT network and go ahead and click OK. Step 6. Install Ubuntu on the virtual machine. So go ahead and click start and then click the file browser button or the file icon. Click on add and then select the Ubuntu ISO that you downloaded from the Ubuntu website, hit open, hit choose and then hit start. Hit enter on Ubuntu and then wait until the loading completes. Now hit the install Ubuntu button, hit the continue button and then go to check minimal installation and then hit continue again. Hit install now and hit continue once more. And after that select your time zone and then fill the appropriate details such as your name, the computer's name and the password. You can choose whatever you want but just make sure you remember them. And now we wait until the loading process is complete here too. After this just go ahead and hit the restart button and then hit the enter button and then we wait. And there you go, you have your Ubuntu operating system. Step 7. Make Ubuntu easier to use. So go ahead and open Terminal. So just search for Terminal and hit Enter. And then make sure to put Terminal as in Favorites or just pin it to the taskbar. And then type in this command that you will see in the description below under Step 7. Hit Enter and then type in your password. After that, hit yes to the agreement and then we wait. Now go ahead to the devices section and hit the install guest editions disk and then click on run and then type in your password and click on authenticate. Hit enter and then we go to devices, make shared clipboard as bidirectional and drag and drop as bidirectional. After that we restart the operating system and then we wait. After that you go ahead and right click on the disk and click the eject button and then we make the window full screen and you can see that the operating system is also now full screen and easier to use. Step 8. Install some packages. So we go ahead back to our trusty terminal and then make it full screen and type in this command which you can get under step 8 in the description below so you can just copy paste type in your password and then hit yes to the agreement again and then wait step 9 fix some problems with cython so if you type in cython in the console you can see that it says cython not found but if you type in cython 3 it shows all these kind of stuff this will cause us errors while packaging the application so i have a solution from stack overflow so what you do is you copy paste this command from under step 9 in the description below or you can just type it in and hit enter. So this notepad will pop up and you'll type in cython3 dollar at the rate and save it and close it. Then type in the next command under step 9 in the description below and now if you type in cython you'll see that all the things that were visible when you typed in cython3 will be visible when you type in cython. After this we do a cd space, this symbol that you see on your screen which is also called a tilde and if you hit enter it takes you back to your home directory. Step 10 download and install bulldozer. So for this we copy paste the first command under step 10 in the description below. This will download all the files necessary to install bulldozer. So if you go to your file manager you will see that a folder named bulldozer under the home directory which will contain all the files necessary but this is not enough to install bulldozer you still need another additional set of packages that you can install by copy pasting the second command under step 10 in the description 
Next we do a cd space buildozer to get into the buildozer folder and then we do a sudo python3 setup.py install to install buildozer in the ubuntu os. And now we clear everything. Step 11 copy your kiwi app code to a folder. So we go open files, create a new folder and name it kiwi app. And after that we're gonna go to show applications and then we're gonna search for text editor. We're going to open the text editor and then we're going to go to our source code for our Kiwi app which is main.py and then we're going to copy this whole source code that you created which might be anything and then we're going to paste it in this document and then we're going to save this in our Kiwi app folder as main.py so we're going to open Kiwi app folder and save it as main.py we're going to hit save and then we're going to minimize that and if you go to your kiwi app folder which was created you'll see the main.py file step 12 create a dot spec file for the application so we're going to do a cd space dot dot and a cd space kiwi app to get to the kiwi app folder and then we're going to do a builders in it to create a spec file for our main python file which contains the source code now if you go to your files you can see the buildozer.spec file in the same folder as your source code. Now when you open this file you can change quite a few things such as the name of the application, the package name of the application and the package domain of the application. Now these can be anything you want but I'm going to name them test app. Now in this section you can add any kind of file types that you want in this application which might be PNGs or icons or etc. Now after that below here you will specify every python package that you have imported in the source code and here you can set the orientation for your application which might be portrait or landscape and now you can save the file and then close it and then go back to your terminal. Step 13 create the application. Now for this we have to turn on developer options and also turn on USB debugging. Now this step will vary for different kinds of phones and operating systems so you can go ahead and google your phone name or your operating system and how to turn on USB debugging in that and also make sure to turn on the stay awake option if you have one. Now we connect our phone to our PC and then right click on the USB icon on the bottom right corner of the window and then select on our phone's name. Now after this, this will connect our phone to the virtual machine but this might not work on the first try. So you have to try multiple times until this notification pops up on your operating system which shows that your phone has been connected. Now we type in the final command which is buildozer, android, debug, deploy and run. Now this will take a few minutes so we will wait until then. Now after like one or two minutes you'll see these kind of agreements pop up from Android so you just hit Y and hit enter and now another one will pop up soon so you just hit Y for that and enter. Now Y means yes. Now after you've done these both it will take nearly 30 minutes for this program to finish running so I'm gonna fast forward this. Now things you have to make sure is that you always have to stay next to your phone and make sure it does not shut down or lock itself. Now as you guys can see we have a huge red error in front of us. Now what caused this if you ask, this is what happened. After 30 minutes of tireless waiting, I decided to go drink a glass of water. And at the exact moment, my phone decided to ask me permission to start the application on my phone. But since I was not there, I couldn't give the permission, hence the time ran out and the error popped up. But no problem because all we have to do now is give the permission on the phone and copy paste the command that we did before and hit enter. Now this will compile the application in no time and then upload it back onto our phone. And now as you guys can see on my screen it is deploying the application to my phone and there you go the application has started and it's just pretty simple it's just a button with some text in between which you can press and that brings us to the end of today's video. Now if you want to create another application with Kiwi you can just swap out my code with yours and when you go to home screen you can see the application test app on the home screen and when you click on it it will take you back to this application that you are open with well this was a tiresome video to make so thank you guys for watching and peace out